Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I am so excited to be covering Ladies of London Season 3, Episode 2. I love this season. I love this cast. So much drama, so much fun, so much to talk about. Let's get into it, you guys. So I'm watching this because, or through YouTube TV. Uh, it's just on there. If you search Ladies of London, it's included. Uh, I have previously, before I had this service, I was buying the seasons from Amazon. Uh, I believe it was like $12 for a season, something like that, if you're looking for it there. I believe somebody told me it was also on Peacock, so maybe check there uh, because that would be free. So check it out if you want to watch along with me. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps. Or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for a dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island, like the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So check it out. Thanks so much. Okay, so it's been one week since Marissa had her baby girl. They named her Sadie. <laughs> so sweet. Um... And we see Matt wheel Sadie in, and she gets to hold her. Oh, that is just the sweetest little girl. So happy to hear that Sadie's doing well. Marissa's doing well. Oh, beautiful baby. That baby looks just like Matt. So cute, that dark hair. Oh, my goodness, those little fists. Okay, paying attention now. Um, So she said when they delivered Sadie... They saw the problem that Marissa was having. They did the hysterectomy. She did lose a lot of blood, unfortunately. Um, but Matt was so relieved when his daughter was born, and then he was taken over by fear. But thankfully, Marissa is a fighter. She's incredibly strong. And um, luckily, they'll both be just fine. So thank goodness they'll be able to take her home in a few days. And they're laughing how this baby looks exactly like Matt. So cute like she's smiling okay over to julie's house she's making breakfast for her children she gets the kids to school uh she gets them on their bus and then she bikes over to this train station jumps on a train takes a three-hour train and wham bam she's at mapperton so um again do you look at julie this is the best she's look in her testimonials her hair looks so much better in those testimonials not so much there but in the testimonials it's like i think she's had hair and makeup done she looks so much better okay so three hour train to get to mapperton luke picks her up and it's a 15 minute drive from there to mapperton she's having a gift shop meeting today she's trying to think of ways to make this mapperton more profitable and um they explain it's 2,000 acres that comprise of 25 homes, a cafe, a gift shop. She says they quite literally run a village. I was blown away by that. I had no idea it was that big. I, I was kind of shocked. Okay, so she says she wants to prove to Luke that she can make this work. Then we go over to Caroline Fleming's. So she just she's going over to her friend's Kim house. So we see Kim and... Kim's asking how Caroline is. She says she's tired, emotionally drained. Remember her dad, unfortunately, is dealing with cancer, so she's traveling quite a bit between London and Denmark. So we find out Kim is engaged to Aaron, um, who was once married to Elizabeth Hurley. Talk about pressure. My God, you always want to know who else your husband was with, <laughs> and you find out it's Elizabeth Hurley. You just got to bang your head against the wall. Um... So I was curious because Kim talk, kept talking about how he's great and they're engaged and it's all going to be great. So I Googled it and sure enough, Kim did marry Aaron. They were married from 2016 and split less than a year later. Yikes. Okay, then we see Caroline's modeling stuff. We hear very loud music saying, who are you to think I should, <laughs> oh my God, who are you to say I should call it a day? That's my horrible British accent, but um, very loud, very silly music. Okay, so we find out that Caroline Fleming is back in Denmark, and this time she's brought Juliet with her, because Juliet doesn't have a storyline, so she might as well tag along to Denmark. And 
Caroline Fleming has modeled for Elle since she was 18 years old. She says she feels comfortable in front of a camera. So they check in this hotel, right? And <laughs> uh, oh, Caroline brought Juliet because Juliet is super into fashion, supposedly. I don't see it. Um, and runs this fashion blog. She thought it'd be good for her. We see this insane montage of Fleming making the bed. She has to remake it. And she said that's all because of boarding school. It had to be made a certain way. She can't have creases. She takes it all apart and remakes it. And Julie's just kind of standing there watching. Okay, so then Julia and Luke are walking around Map Pretend. And here's the deal. I could go over all this. It's kind of boring. Let me tell you a more interesting story. So when I was looking up, I don't know, sometimes I go on these Google deep dives. You know me. Uh... I found a very interesting article written about Luke, and he's been through some stuff. I had no idea. So apparently he had a surgery when he was about 19 years old to fix a sinus issue, and that basically led into an addiction to prescription meds. Uh, Dr. Ronley prescribed him meds, but he got hooked, and he went into treatment and was out of treatment and um it was even while he like it sounds like it went on for years um even when you know julie had she had four kids between the age of like two and ten i think and um she said he was struggling so bad with it that he didn't even get out of bed on christmas one day like and she just couldn't handle it so she had a complete meltdown and went to her car and was freaking out because she didn't want the kids to see her freaking out. And that's where he found her. And that helped him get checked in, um, I think, finally to rehab. And sounds like it got fixed. That is a wild story. That's awful. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. It's terrible, but interesting. So then we go over to Caroline. She's with her sister, Victoria. And she says they've always had an up and down relationship. Victoria's the baby of the family. They're completely polar opposites um, because her sister loves to cook, is very outdoorsy. She's not into any of that. She says, you know, as they've gotten older, they've definitely grown closer. So they're meeting up to go see this designer, this designer who's going to help Caroline with her D Dubai house. It's a huge house. Apparently it has six roof terraces they're talking about. Holy cow. Um, incredible rooms. They're showing pictures of it. We see this dressing room that is to die for. It's huge. It's incredible. And Stanberry is super excited about it. Uh, here's the kitchen here. I was able to get some of the pictures. Here's the bedroom. Uh, I've been trying to figure out. So, of course, we know. In oh, there's the dressing room there. We found out, of course, that she and Jim have since divorced. I believe she stayed on in Dubai after that. Now, we just, I mean, I, this is going to come out in a few weeks, but we just found out Caroline Stanberry got engaged. Uh, so congratulations to her. And I'm very curious where they live. We go over to Marissa's house. She's holding her new baby. So cute. Sophie comes over to see them. Marissa leaves the baby with Matt so she can go have a cocktail. This is a big deal for her. She hasn't been able to do this. She's been... Stuck on bed rest, that sucks. Uh, so then we go back to Star Caroline Stanberry and Victoria. They're talking about the house. Victoria's completely blown away. Stanberry says they grew up in a big house full of nannies and drivers and cooks and rules. And then she went to boarding school with more rules. She just doesn't want to be tied to an estate like she's expected to be. And she doesn't want these labels or these rules. So kind of explains a little bit more about her personality. Marissa and Sophie have lunch. Marissa is excited to get out of her house. Feels like she's been out of the loop. They talk about Sophie's party. And Sophie tells Marissa that Stanberry was using her to have a go at Jules. And that's exactly what it is. And I'm glad Sophie... I'm glad Sophie kind of realizes that. But then again, Sophie kind of poured gas on the fire too. Uh, Marissa says, that's not a friendship. It's a minion that she wants. We've seen this before. Caroline tends to gravitate toward the ones who will do whatever she wants, like Juliet. So Caroline and Adela decide to go shopping. She says she needs a whole new wardrobe for Dubai. And so they're looking at shoes. 
And Adela says since she met Caroline, she or when she first met Caroline, she had awful style. And we do see pictures. She did have awful style. It's kind of funny. She would copy everybody else's look that she loved. And I'm thinking, wow, she got great style now. I love everything she wears. She looks fantastic. Um, let's see. Caroline. Okay, so they talk about... Uh, Adela asks if Caroline sorted out with Sophie. And Stanberry says she's taken up for Sophie so many times, over and over. You know, even through the divorce, she's had Sophie's back. Adela explains she had lunch with Julie and Caroline Stanberry. She and Caroline have had the biggest flight fights on the planet, Adela and Caroline. And tells Caroline Stanberry, listen, you can be an ice queen. Well, Stanberry is mad. She doesn't want Adela and Julie to have to get together. She just she feels betrayed. Stanberry says Julie should get her own friends and not try to recruit hers. Uh, I don't know. I, again, this seems a little juvenile. It is a little weird that Adela had lunch with Julie, but maybe they're friends. I don't know. Stanberry says it's pathetic and disloyal for Adela to have dinner with Julie. And, uh, and, and Adela's point is we're just trying to get you guys to make up. <laughs> so I don't think Adela did anything wrong. I think Stanberry's all about loyalty and we see she picks fights with people who she sees as disloyal. So then we're back in Copenhagen, and Juliet and Caroline Fleming are getting ready for this fashion event. It's the L Style Awards. Um, they look, I mean, for once, I actually like Julie's dress. Uh, Juliet, sorry, I keep calling her Julie. Juliet's dress here. It's weird, but I kind of like it. It's pretty on her. I really like her clothes. I, I admit that top part's a little weird. It looks like a tank top. But um, Fleming is always stunning. She always knocks it out of the park. So they're getting ready for this event, or they, they go to this event and we see Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott are there, which was funny. So they meet. They take pictures together. Juliet says when Caroline's in Denmark, she's like Oprah. People are calling her and wanting hugs and pictures and autographs. And <laughs> So, um, okay. So then this was kind of a big storyline. So the press, obviously, are talking to Caroline Fleming. And they ask her about, oh, are you here to visit your family? And she says yes. And she ends up talking a lot to them and telling them that her dad is very sick. And they're like, they keep asking her questions about it and she lets it slip that it's cancer. And she realizes in that moment she shouldn't have said anything. Um, they finish the event, they go back to the hotel and she's feeling terrible. She says she sees the headlines and the headlines are saying, Caroline Fleming's father is seriously sick with cancer. She's deeply upset. She says she got caught up in the moment. And this will not go down well with her family. Uh, affairs are never to be discussed publicly. She'll call her stepmother tomorrow and explain it. And she feels so bad. She hopes that they'll understand. So then we're back at Stanberry's rental house. Sophie brings her kids over. Uh, Sophie says, I've known Caroline for 20 years. I've never been on the receiving end of her anger and her annoyance like this before. So remember, it was at Sophie's cheer up lunch. She was trying to have to get the girls to rally around her about her divorce that Stanberry really came for her and was really pissed. Um, so they talk about that lunch and Stanberry says Sophie was all over the place. Sophie says she felt like she was thrown under the bus. Stanberry says, you told Jules I called her dangerous. So I think Stanberry has a point there. But Sophie's point is, listen, it wasn't that big a deal. I did. She just kind of threw that word out. She didn't know Julie would glom onto it like that. Stanberry says, of course I'm uh, going to go back for you. You said the night before she had a go at you. Sophie says she isn't going to take this. I don't need you to do to me what you did to Julie because Stanberry's really pissed with her. Sophie says, talking louder uh, than me, you will not win this argument. And that does seem to be a thing with Stanberry. When she gets pissed, she yells, she talks loud. Okay. Sophie continues to say she was sorry about how it all went down. Stanberry says it's not enough. She has to take responsibility for it. 
Uh, to camera, Caroline says, Sophie is single. She needs friends. She's latching on to anyone she can get. I'd say that's a low blow. Sophie is going through a lot with this divorce. I like Sophie. She seems like a genuinely nice person. And I'm sure she is low. You know, she probably just said something without thinking. She's dealing with a lot and it went down wrong. And now she's having to deal with the fallout. And Stanberry's being really cold and mean to her. Um, okay, so Sophie says, I put my hands up and I'm sorry. Stanberry says she's questioning Sophie's loyalty. And that is how the episode ends. Woo, that is big. This is such a good season. So much drama going on. Uh, we see a flash to next time. It's a lot of Mapperton going on. Um, Marissa, unfortunately, the baby was taken to the hospital. Oh, that's got to be tough. It's Julie versus Caroline Stanberry. And then we see Adela versus Caroline Stanberry. So Caroline's kind of fighting with everybody. And this is kind of what I remember. I remember really liking Stanberry the first two seasons. And I remember she was tough this season. I'm going to go on a limb and say it's got to be a lot of pressure to pick up and move to another country. Um, especially one, you know, so different than what you're used to. She's moving from England to Dubai. That's a big move. So... Maybe the stress is getting to her. I don't know, but I just don't, I, I have trouble with her this season. I always like her as a cast member, but I do have trouble with her this season. So don't hate me for that. That's just my opinion. So that is it for the episode, you guys. I'm really enjoying the season. I'm enjoying doing these recaps. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm actually sad because I know that we're barreling toward the ending of the series, and I'm not cool with that. I need them to bring the show back. I actually tweeted it at Bravo and got a whole lot of likes a few weeks ago, but um, bring this show back. I love it. Anyway, so we'll find a new show to cover when this is over, but man, I'm enjoying these so much. I hope you guys are too. Well, you guys stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching and take care of yourselves, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.